I think one of the benefits of doing this uh, is that you're helping create a prairie so that people within driving distance of Portland can come out in the spring and enjoy what the pioneers would have seen when they came across in their covered wagons uh, 200 years ago. Hello, my name is Bob Hansen. It's November 4th, 2013. I'm standing along the Dalles Mountain Road getting ready for a cattle drive. I'm very fortunate that I was able to get grazing written into that park plan with the government and then uh, very fortunate that Bob is the environmental overseer for the public because I've been trying for years to be able to show that cattle are a tool, livestock can be used as a tool to improve the landscape or change it. I don't know where you could go within 300 miles of Portland to find a prairie uh, of, of a high quality. What I discovered when I investigated it was that they were using the cattle as a tool for restoring the prairie lands here. So as one who's been passionately involved with restoration, particularly prairie restoration, I volunteered to participate coming from the environmental standpoint. We'll be moving about 120 head of cattle from a ranch on the north side of the Columbia Hills to the Dalles Mountain Ranch, where they'll be grazing for the next 30 days or so, with the purpose of removing the thick thatch of uh, non-native grasses so that the wildflowers and other native plants will have a chance to spring forth from their seed bank. Historically, it was removed either through fire or through uh, more grazing by bison or uh, other animals. It's just not happening anymore. Not very many bison in this part of the world. Major bison were to the east of here, but they're up to the Cascades, apparently there might have been. But you know, I, I'm pretty sure that Mother Nature throws things out there to see if it'll stick. You know, <laughs> it's the nature. My, that's we, my we, theory. We, we, we're always pushing our boundaries. Yeah. Uh, there's 82 cows in this bunch. Uh, the calves have been off the cows for uh, about a week, so that. Uh, I don't move the cows down here to the park until I'm pretty sure they're uh, weaned from their calves. Otherwise, if I come down too soon, they'll start pushing against the fence and getting out looking for their calves. The partners on this project are the Columbia Hills State Park. It's a part of the Washington State Park system. So Washington State Park's a partner. Washington State University, the Agriculture Extension people. Uh, Steve Van Fleet is with uh, the Agriculture Extension agent with Washington State University. And then Jim Sizemore has a cattle ranch and so we use his cattle. The project uh, is a, a five-year project with another five-year renewal, if I remember what uh, Steve had, had initially told me. Uh, but each year when we come down here it kind of depends on the weather on how long we stay because we're not we're not set up to feed cows in the winter down here it's just grazing and so if the weather goes bad like one year it started raining so hard it was getting so soft I didn't want to hurt the ground you know, anymore. So we came down and moved the cows out. They'd only been here five days that year. We hope to get at least a good month of grazing, if we can, to get enough impact on this grass that's so, it, 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 it's been undisturbed for so long, it's dying. It needs impact, disturbance. It's, it's kind of like your lawn you mow it and it comes back nice, thick and lush. If you just let it go, by the end of the summer it'll be clumpy, there'll be some bare spots. Uh, grass, grass needs that, that 
clipped to be clipped at the right time and then allowed to grow back to keep it vibrant and healthy. This project is very valuable and uh, the grasses and restoring the, the seed bed of the grasses that we have here. Um, it kind of went to a dormant now with the cattle grazing it's helped it a lot. Um, we see this year coming in a lot more green growth to it than we had say three years ago. Um, the, the, the dead dry stuff has been eaten down and it's gave way to more green and it just looks healthier. The benefit that we have from these cattle is that they eat back and provide the disturbance that fires may have produced 200 years ago before European settlement. And what's impressive to me is that we are getting 15 to 20 different wildflowers springing forth from the seed bank that would not have popped up otherwise. This is an important area, this little uh, about a hundred meter square space, it's called an exclosure. The cattle have been, uh, this area has been fenced off so that cattle could not get to it. You can see the grasses are very dense. There's basically the two, two different species of, of cultivars that I mentioned right in this area. And then as you look up the hill, that's the area that has been grazed. And you don't really see degradation to the hillside. It's not barren. It's actually uh, quite vibrant. Um, so that's showing that the cattle grazing on a limited basis is not detrimental. This is what I'd call a very dry and brittle environment. And my management theory would be uh, graze at fall and spring and then the cattle need to be someplace else in the summertime and you need to come off of it early spring over here not late spring years ago my my wife's family leased this when it was a ranch this park and they wintered their cows and calved them out down here and the fields that uh, are in grass now that we graze they were uh, alfalfa fields and they'd put the hay up in the summer down here but the ranch sold and they they didn't have the ability to buy it. My father used to um, run cattle on this very piece of property years ago and he grazed it and um, over the years and it was uh, very viable as a grazing piece of land. This is a wonderful place. This open land, open spaces, not many neighbors, um, wonderful climate, peace and quiet. I think uh, my father, I think has probably been close to 30 years ago that he ran cattle here. And then there has been no cattle for, I'm guessing 20, 30 years, the land was just set aside with no grazing. We're experimenting uh, on this pilot grazing project I believe it's 220 acres, the total, uh, but Steve uh, has used electric fencing to cross fence that and to get it into smaller uh, lots so that the cattle will impact it more. And restoration and cattle grazing is taking place on 200 acres. But the West has millions of acres where the same techniques could be used. Personally, I would, <laughs> I would like to see the project expanded to the rest of the park. Uh, I think there's about 3,000 acres that the park has in this, in this ground, and we're only on one little piece of it. Uh, if if we're impacting in a good way the, where we're at, then I, I think that the rest of the park deserves the same treatment. We hope that uh, this has been uh, very valuable for the park system and we hope to maybe be able to expand it, use more grazing places around on the park and maybe for longer periods of time to to help the grass growth. Basically, once this area gets pretty well uh, managed, then it could be uh, transferred to another area. But we're experimenting here now and learning a lot in terms of how long the cattle should be on, how many cattle there should be, when is the off.
optimum time to have those cattle here. That's what we're doing today, um, is grazing it off and just keeping it very healthy with the cattle. I grew up in the Yakima Valley and on 30 acres. My, my dad owned 30 acres in the Yakima Valley and he worked out for wages. My mom worked uh, there all through high school and, and junior high. I worked for uh, neighboring uh, ranches and farms. Uh, it was always my dream to have my own place, so I guess I, I'm, I'm living my dream. Life is good. My wife, this is what she always wanted to do. She is a school teacher at uh, our local school for 32 years. She retired two years ago. Uh, and this is, this is exactly what she loves to do. I'm Nancy Sizemore and um, I'm Jim's wife. Well, I was born and raised in Centerville on a cattle ranch, so basically I've been doing this all my life. Um, I was married, I got married to Jim, and I taught school in uh, primary grades for 32 years, and I retired about three years ago, and uh, I just wanted to help more on the ranch. Uh, I'm very involved in what we do. Uh, we move cattle a lot around in different places. My son, he works with us. He's a partner on the place. I mean, what could be better? My name is Will Sizemore. I live there in Centerville, Washington. Work on the family ranch with my mom and dad. Uh, I've been doing this. Well, this is the only thing I've done uh, since I was a little kid. Uh, probably the easiest thing about it to do since I've been a little kid is uh, my mom and dad worked outside every day um, so I lived in the pack board when I was too small to walk and then when I was able to walk I had to help do chores morning and night and uh, got old enough I was able to ride a horse and it just kind of went from there. Oh I remember um before I was in school riding with my dad, it was over on these hills and he sent me down, they were down at the bottom branding some calves in a krell and he sent me on top and said, be sure and follow the fence line to get down. It was very steep and I could see him way down there and I stayed on the fence line and when I got there he says, oh my gosh, that was awfully steep. You should have found the road. <laughs> but um, just doing things, following behind a horse with my dad. I can remember being, oh, I wasn't in kindergarten yet, and we were working cattle, and I was, uh, I wasn't on my horse, I was afoot, but I got to uh, rope some of the calves when we branded. I hope to pass the, our, my way of life and our family tradition on to my grandchildren. Um, I think it's important for them to know, to care for the land and the animals, and enjoy it like I have. Uh, got our two grandkids. Kaiser Ann is uh, six and Reese Keith is five and this is Reese's horse that I'm riding today and so they come down and help us. Uh, life is good. That's the one nice thing about what what we do. Uh, very seldom are two days exactly the same. And, and as the seasons change, our work changes. I like my job because, uh, one, I get to be outside. And uh, number two, uh, I'm doing what I like every day so it doesn't seem like a job versus people in town that go to the office or whatnot every day. Um, I'm always doing something different. Uh, maybe it's the same step every year at the same time, but it's a different different season, brings different jobs. Um, you know, with my family, uh, friends, you know, uh, 
it's all a pretty good deal. I mean, it doesn't really seem like work most days. Our life, daily lives vary. Uh, this fall we've been very busy gathering cattle in the mountains, so we get up in the morning and uh, do our chores, feed our animals, and usually uh, saddle horses and head off to the mountains to gather cows. Um, it takes most all day and um, home at night. Uh, we are oftentimes in the fall for a month we've camped in the mountains gathering cows and we get them to certain places and then we drive them home. These cows have spent all summer in the mountains. We brought them home about two weeks ago. Um, the days are full. It's, it's a lot of work but with family and friends um, it's very enjoyable. For our cattle, for our operation, uh, this is a harvest period time for us because we're selling these calves. I get up usually around 5, 5.30, <clears throat> go outside, do chores, uh, have a little breakfast, maybe kind of discuss what needs to be done most that day, maybe plan out the week. If it's first of the week, plan out the rest of the week. Then we'll either be doing something with the cattle. This time of year, it's pretty much the cattle. We're uh, shipping calves, getting calves vaccinated, uh, getting these cows situated on pasture. Um, we're still right now out a few cows from our summer range. So that's always something that's kind of coming up last minute. Somebody will call, seen the cattle. We gotta go try to find them. Uh, or, you know, somebody neighbor put them in the corral so they'll give us a call and we'll go load them up bring them home and we'll have to process the calves so everything's on the same schedule has been vaccinated at the same similar time uh, Ready for a cow? so that when it comes to shipping time everything's had their one vaccination actually i can't really say that we do have a vacation um a spare time I really can't say that we have much of any spare time. It's just uh, different times in the summer, we're busy farming, putting up hay. Fall, we're gathering cows. Winter, we're feeding cows. Spring, we're um, having baby calves. Um, uh, we really don't have a vacation. I guess our life is full the way it is. We don't need one. I don't know who said it, but somebody a long time ago said if you Love what you do for a living, you'll never work a day in your life. I love this way of life, and like I say, I was born and raised doing this, and love the land, love taking care of it, love the animals. Um, it's just um, a tradition and, and very enjoyable being outdoors. Like I said, my main hobby I really had was going to rodeos. Um, Nowadays, uh, this is kind of it. I like riding. I got a stud horse and I raise a few colts and I like training them. Um, like to get together with my friends once in a while. We might go fishing once in a great while. Depends on how busy we are. Maybe they'll just, we'll come, stop by one another's house in the evening. Life's pretty good. It's pretty good. Romer! Romer, come on. My dog. Come here. Come on, boy. Come on. Everybody has one or two dogs of their own. The dogs are, um, are a lot of use to us, and um, uh, we all need them to move cows. Well, I sent her around that side of the cows that looked like they were going to come down here into this giant jog in the fence and I wanted to keep them on the road tracking. Come on D. There are dogs and they just listen to us. My dog just listens to me. Will's dog follows him and does what he says and Jim's follows them. Um, they just become attached to you and you have your kind of own commands that the dog knows. So they stay with you and do what you ask. Um, I have one dog today. His name is Romer and he's about four years old. Um, I have a horse about eight years old. Her name is Tilly. I'm riding today. I have a few, but this is, these are the ones I have today. We become very attached, especially to our horses and our dogs. Our dogs are very valuable. So when our horses get old and we lose them, yes, that's a loss of, a, of like a family member. 
I think the sad moments losing your family, you know, um, sad moments. We had a pasture lease and we um, worked, had it for 20 years and then it went to someone else and that was sad to lose a piece of property that when you lease it, it becomes part of you and you, if you're, of what you do and then when you lose it, it's losing something. My father-in-law told me one time that uh, cows, when they line out, they can walk three miles an hour. And I think that's pretty close, like a human. Well, a cow is a very smart animal, and they're basically kind, um, and they're, they're easy to handle. Um, I guess just growing up with them, you've kind of learned to know them. I think cows will, um, cows are kind of creatures of habit. Like if they're grazing, they like, they go back to the same area. Um, they like to stay together in herds. It's predominantly Angus and Angus cross. That's the black uh, hide is the Angus. The white face comes and then there's a, a few of these uh, red red cows with the white face. They're they are uh, Hereford. When you cross an Angus with a Hereford, you get the white face or the brockle face uh, with the black body. I, I don't believe that the cowboy is the dying breed. I hope not. Um, as long as there's land and private property and uh, where we can run cattle. I think there will always be cattle in. America's got to eat beef, and this is the best uh, homegrown beef that they're going to find. And so we need cattlemen, cowboys, we need cattle to feed America. Uh, we eat our beef, and it's the best. <laughs> well, they taste the best. <laughs> well, just like everyone else, you can't beat a, a steak <laughs> from, a, from a ranch ra raised animal. Well, I, I believe that beef is beef, doesn't matter if it's Hereford or Angus, um, as long as it's um, grass-fed, grain-fed, um, American beef it is um, very tasteful, very healthy, and um, I will continue to eat it. Hope everybody does. Well, I think today went pretty smooth. Uh, we just gathered them cows up and got them on the road, and they trailed right down here and had pretty decent weather, even though there wasn't much sunshine. Uh, Got the water situated. Um, probably bring some salt back here a little later on this afternoon. Check on things, make sure everything's still in the pasture, the wire's hot. And then tomorrow we'll have to come by here sometime in the morning, make sure everything, the water's okay, cattle are still in. Uh, and then we'll just be to checking them once a day from there, once every other day, depending on what our schedule is at home. We'll check back because the water's kind of a precarious thing here in, in this pasture. Uh, we, we check it uh, every other day at least. Some, sometimes we'll come down every day in a row for a while if there's been a problem. We have to make sure that we have the salt and mineral out for the cows and then I'll put out some uh, protein supplement tubs to give them a little protein boost. The, the protein won't be that high in, in some of this dried grass. I want to make sure that the cows nutritional requirements are met. You know, if, if, if I don't take care of her, she won't take care of me. Hopefully the weather will, will let us stay here for uh, a month. Uh, at least a month would be great. Uh, there should be enough feed out there, even if we had to move to one more lot there for the month, and maybe longer. It just depends on Mother Nature. Today the cattle moved well. It was really good weather to drive cattle. Uh, it's not too hot. We didn't have a rainstorm or a snowstorm. Uh, the cattle didn't get hot coming here, and they're pretty peaceful now. They're, some are bedded down, some are grazing. So, it, and nobody got hurt. Everything went smooth. It was a very good day that way, very good. 
Okay, Washington Cattlemen's Association start uh, sponsors a bull sale, all breed bull sale, every spring, and it is held uh, outside nor north of Pasco, and uh, uh, on a ranch there, where the, all the bulls are put on a gain test. The tsunami hit the coast of Japan about seven days before our bull sale. My, my family donated a replacement heifer to the Washington Cattlemen's Association to take to the bull sale and sell it to uh, generate uh, revenue to send to the Japan to help in re relief efforts. Uh, we had uh, the local auction yard in Topnish was there. We, uh, the representative from the Washington Cattle Feeders Association was there. Uh, representatives from the Angus Breed Association was there. Uh, they brought the heifer in to start the whole program out and she was sold and turned back which they sold her again and they kept doing that until uh, the cattlemen at that sale uh, donated over twenty thousand dollars for relief efforts to send to Japan and we sent the money to the US Meat Export Federation's office in Japan and <clears throat> they provided 6,000 meals with beef in it for the people in Japan. That summer, U.S. Meat Export Federation brought uh, six Japanese journalists back to Washington State and they came and toured our ranch and our operation and we had uh, a very enjoyable time. Very enjoyable time and one of the most remarkable things then that I remember that we had a barbecue that evening and I had my grandkids were down and uh, my little nephew my wife's nephew they were they were over there my kids grandkids would have been uh, four and three years old and Lane was, would have been four years old and they were out in the yard there where we were having the the barbecue and they were playing laughing they, you know like a bunch of little puppies so uh, I, I got to looking at at our guests and er, everybody had stopped talking and they were watching those little kids and the interpreter the little gal that came with with them to serve as interpreter I asked her I said what is there something wrong and she said no she said since since that uh, tsunami hit and it destroyed that uh, nuclear reactor. Our children are not allowed outside to play, and we miss hearing the sounds of little little children la laughing and playing. Uh, I thought that was kind of neat. If you love what you do for a living, you'll never work a day in your life. <laughs>